a few ancient alien images. Now this one, typically used as evidence. Evidence of what, you may wonder? Evidence that grey aliens have come to Earth. And it must be true because this is clearly a grey alien on Egyptian hieroglyphs. Allow me to enlighten you as to the true context of this with a proper and clear close-up, which is not simply taken out of context. So yeah, I believe the term is whoops. Clearly in this context, it does not look like a grey alien. When they show you a fuzzy or unclear image with a heavily emphasised close-up to make it look like something, they are being deceptive. When you look at a high quality image, you see it looks like something else. Perhaps those black parts are not actually eyes. The question you have to ask is why would experts lie? It depends what you mean by an expert. Many of the great authors within the field of studying the so-called ancient astronauts theory, in whichever particular aspect, are not really experts in any one particular area of science. Many of them don't even have any serious qualifications. They're perhaps in some ways highly educated, but many of them are dropouts. Many of them are merely authors. That is their primary qualification, and that's simply the act of being published. So, why would they lie? I think the answer is obvious. If they wish to lie with intent, it is for, well, it's a question of cupidity in the end. It's a question of uh, desire for wealth. There probably are those who believe in it, who have some kind of genuine belief. But in that kind of context, we'd end up finding the same sort of problem as you would find with, say, people of a religious belief, where even if they are told, given cast iron information, which shows that what they believe is, well, false, they will still simply keep on perpetuating the same stories. So even if rational conclusions can be drawn, which don't in any way, shape or form suggest aliens, they would still say that aliens must have done it, whatever it is they claim aliens have done, simply because of their belief in the phenomena. A few images to go over now. I can go over more in future videos if wished. This one, people would claim, is a person wearing a space helmet, even though we don't know that. The mere suggestion of similarities between this and modern technology is enough to bridge the gap for some people. However, the suggestion is not enough. Merely wearing a type of headdress of this kind is not enough to say it must have been aliens using technology, well, similar to what we have now. You may as well say time travel or anything, but it doesn't actually prove a thing. Now this image here, as I've shown you with the other image, looks less like an ancient astronaut and more like some kind of twisted creature from the game Amnesia. And if you've ever played Amnesia, you've got these twisted monsters of, uh, I think it's like three different kinds. And uh, this one looks a bit like the one I'm showing you here. But does it look like an ancient alien? Well, not necessarily. I don't know, maybe it does. But I sure as hell don't see that it's evidential. Is it evidential of them predicting the game Amnesia? Well, no, probably not that either. You see, many of these images, we don't even know the context of them or the beliefs associated with them. 
but the ancient astronaut theorists can insert an idea of what they're meant to be. Like David Icke might see this image and say it's a reptilian. Because if you look at it in the right way, it looks a little bit like some kind of reptilian of some kind of science fiction program. Like the TV series V, perhaps. Here we have more peculiar looking creatures or beings scratched onto a wall in a sort of primitive method of storytelling. Were they referring to the gods in their own little pantheon? Or were they referring to aliens? Well, we certainly have no more evidence for aliens coming to Earth than we do of gods coming to Earth. We have no reason to assume that these limited hieroglyphs are in any way evidential. Images such as these have been used by people who believe that aliens may have witnessed the crucifixion or even that Jesus could have been an alien if you believe the the Raelians. But the fact is, we don't know. This doesn't look like evidence to me. Interesting, yes, some of the artistic merit of later artists. But obviously these images are not of the time of Jesus. Was it artists using artistic license to show certain individuals flying through the heavens in heavenly vehicles, heavenly carriages, you might say? Or was it inspired by aliens? Well, it could have been. You never know. But it's still not quite evidence, is it? You know, even the best evidence from the so-called ancient alien believers, the ancient astronaut theorists, is, at best, circumstantial. And this, in my view, isn't even that. So, this artist, the one who made this actual painting, this image, was using a bit of artistic license to show certain beings flying through the sky, perhaps previous prophets, saints, or something of the same effect. And we're meant to believe that it's proof of aliens? Really? The problem with ancient alien theorists, any like being flying in the sky, whether on a cloud, on a wheel, on a ball of light, or within a kind of sky carriage, automatically, it must be aliens. And yet there isn't any physical proof. There's no solid evidence. It's all very, very circumstantial, at best. The ancient astronaut theorists try and claim that this is a pilot piloting a space craft. They couldn't be more wrong. The experts who've studied Central American culture have been able to actually say what these things actually are. The symbolic imagery has meaning. The ancient Mayan king Pakal appears to be flying a craft, according to ancient alien experts. However, what you see him sitting on is symbolic of the sun, which is a common characteristic in many particular artworks of the ancient Mayans and Aztecs. The central column is in fact the tree of life, and the so-called, well, flames, which are supposedly at the bottom of this image, are basically the roots of the tree. Some of the other characteristics around this particular image are also common characteristics from ancient Mayan and Aztec culture, because they share many common links. And therefore, 
the experts been able to explain, or perhaps even explain away, the so-called ancient alien theory as far as this particular idea. So was King Pakal in fact a ancient astronaut? No, probably not. In my view, although you may disagree, the ancient alien theorists, even with their best evidence, are being intellectually dishonest and the honesty is so obvious and easily researchable and yet not passed on dogmatically as within most religion, at least not in the same way, that I'm assuming the great experts in this field, this field of pseudoscience, are basically out there for the money. They're out there for the cash because they realize they can keep on fooling people who can't be bothered to do a simple Google search. And in fact, I'd like to recommend that people go out there and watch a video. A video called Ancient Aliens Debunked. And I'll leave a link below. It covers many of the points, many of the ideas within the TV series Ancient Aliens. They're so-called best points. And over the course of over three hours, the points they've made are debunked. In the end, what keeps it going? The whole idea of ancient astronauts? Are several factors. Most notably, ignorance of the facts. The desire to believe in something more than yourself. And of course, those people who capitalise on that in order to make big money off their book sales. It's very simple. You have people who don't know any better, people who wish to believe, and those who wish to make money. 